Father, your word is good, your word is true, your word is life. Have your way today, Father. We thank you for encouragement, strength, revelation from heaven today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This is Pastor John. I'm excited to be here and I'm ready to go. I have a message that God has delivered from him to me for you. It's a full contact message. I'm happy to be the deliverer of it. I pray that it encourages you. I pray that it strengthens you. I pray that you know that you are loved by God. You are loved by God. No matter where you're at or what you're going through right now in these, in these crazy times, it's so important to know 
that God loves you. Here we are in the coattails of Easter, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Wow, what a powerful, powerful concept, if we allow it to be. See, there's other things out there lobbying to speak a truth that is contrary to the Word of God. I want to tell you today, personally, I'm a little tired of some of the truth that's being ministered out there by the world. Now, I want to preface that a bit by saying there is a lot of wise things that are happening out there in the midst of this, the C word, <laughs> COVID-19. Um, there's a lot of wisdom to be followed, but there's been this message as I've been reflecting these last few months uh, that's created something, well, some things that most of us aren't even used to. Um, but a couple months into it, I've noticed that we're kind of getting used to some of these things that we weren't used to. Social distancing, uh, keeping, keeping distance from each other, massive amounts of messages, stay home, and they even have a word of encouragement uh, behind them. Stay home, stay away from people. And again, wisdom and all that stuff, and we should follow. But I have something different that I want to share today that God's put on my heart. That we should be, as believers, in a position to allow our faith to project, to get back to scripturally what God wants us to, to how he wants us to operate and what he wants us to do in the body of Christ. I am in the, in the midst of a church right now that is empty. There's three of us here, so we're in compliance. Boy, we're, uh, we're seven less than the, the ten gathering, uh, praise God. But I, what I see is the day that we're going to be able to get together. That's what I want you to point your faith to. That's the full contact message that God has for you today. Full contact. Full contact. I want to share a scripture um, a couple with you from the book of Matthew and just to kind of give it a, a, a stage if you will it's as Jesus was finishing up praying in the garden of Gethsemane right before he was betrayed by Judas so there you have it Matthew 26 45 through 51 are the verses that we will we will read today some of them. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? I got to pause right there. Jesus is talking to the disciples. If you remember, he had shared with them, pray. And then he went to go pray to the Father and he came back and they were asleep. And then he went and he said, Wake up. And then he went back and he prayed and he came back. And so now he's coming back and going, You're still sleeping? He said, stay awake, lest you be tempted. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's so much power in that. And as he came to them, he said, are you still sleeping? In other words, that message then and the message now is wake up. Wake up. There are some things that are about to happen. He said, are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now his betrayer had given them a sign. Pay attention to this sign. He said, whoever I kiss, he is the one sees him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, greetings, rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest 
and cut off his ear. Luke twenty two fifty one 51 says that after that, Jesus, he touched this man's ear and healed him. Now I want to give a little context to, as we're so sensitive to social gathering and, you know, this social, or excuse me, social distancing, I, I am uh, in agreement of the message of social gathering. It was no different than what was going on here in the scripture in the book of Matthew. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all record this, this event, this great event. And one, one place particularly that I want to draw attention to is uh, in, the, in St. John chapter 18, verse 3, when Judas came with a great multitude, the, the scripture says in John 18, that it, in verse 3, it says, Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops, the New King James says. The King James uses the word a, a band of men. Now, the reason I want to shed light on that is because this detachment of troops, this band of men, that word detachment and band comes from the Greek word spera. And... It's a very simple definition. It literally is a tenth of a legion. So there was 600 men. 600 men, not including the chief priests. This is just the, the, the troops and the soldiers that came to get Jesus. So there was a pretty big gathering that was happening right there. I love in the book of John how it continues to say that when Judas went up to him, they asked him afterwards, They said, Jesus asked them, and he said, Whom are you seeking? And they answered him and said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am. The New King James and many of the Bible translations add the word he to that, meaning Jesus said, I am he. But Jesus just announced who he was. I am. And when he said that, the scripture says in John that all those people that, that were there, hundreds of people, they drew back and at the words, I am, they fell down. Do you remember the Old Testament when Moses asked God, who shall I say is sending me? And God said, tell them I am. Jesus said, I am, and at that powerful word, the thing that was coming against him fell down. I want to share with you today about this full contact message that we as believers should begin to position ourselves to start speaking against what is going on out there. When you look at this scripture in Matthew, there are, there are many things that are contrary to what is going on today. Obviously, I covered the great multitude, hundreds of people. A kiss. If Jesus came into your house right now, would you second guess kissing him? I certainly wouldn't. And I believe that when family members, friends come over, the way that we used to greet them, we think about that differently. This is what I want to draw attention to. Again, there's wisdom in doing that thing right now of staying apart but there's something that should be happening on the inside of us that we should start pointing our faith towards that which is scriptural and that is full contact now in this scripture obviously people have titled this kiss that judas gave jesus the kiss of betrayal don't Focus on the betraying part of it. Focus on the principle, not the deceit, but the principle of how common it was for people to embrace each other and to kiss each other. In fact, multiple times in Scripture, it says to greet each other with a holy kiss. Romans 16, 16. Greet each other with the most holy kiss. Today, we think... A little differently about that. Now, I do find some humor in this. It's, it's quite interesting. There's been, you know, I've gone to a few of the essential places uh, to, to get things like food and, you know, some supplies to keep the house, you know, up and going. 
Uh, side note, why does plumbing and, and electrical things always seem to happen on weekends? I, I don't know. So I had to go to a few essential places and I do find humor. I, I see people, bless their heart, wearing masks and, and you know, it's down over their lips and coming down by their chin and their nose is exposed and you know, they're, they're, they're doing all this stuff and I get, the, I get the effort of doing it, but there's humor in it. People are walking and you'll come around a blind corner and aisle and it's like we stop with this invisible force around us, it's like that. We now know what six feet is. It's like all these, these buffer zones it's, it's really interesting. I've noticed even some people as they're driving in parking lots, they tend to give each other a little wider berth of space when they're driving as if, oh man, we don't even want the cars to get close. There's, there's, there's some stuff going on out there that is, it is funny. I want to share a little bit about, about this, this greeting, this greeting with a kiss in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 and 14, the New King James says it this way. It's instruction. It says, finally, brethren, become complete. That sounds good. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss all the saints greet you the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all that just sounds cuddly it sounds comforting it sounds close it doesn't sound afar. It doesn't sound like distance. This is what we should be pointing our faith at. Getting to those things, not back, but forward to the things that we're supposed to be doing. The message translation says the same scripture for 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 11, and 14 this way. It says, and that's about it, friends. Be careful. Keep things in good repair. Keep your spirits up. Think in harmony. Be agreeable. Do all of that, and the God of love and peace will be with you for sure. Greet one another with a holy embrace. All brothers and sisters here say hello. In essence, they're saying there are times that we can greet and salute from a distance. That scripture was saying we're riding from here to you over there and we greet you. But this is not the type of greeting that I'm talking about or that scripture is referencing here. Greet one another with a holy embrace. We, we second think that right now all the time. Right before this message, I'm here with two people that I love dearly. I can see in my peripheral right now. The sweet Hannah over here. Handsome Andrew over there. They're waving and they're smiling. We were up here preparing and as I was just praying prior to this message, I had my eyes closed and I was just focusing on the Lord. And they both came up behind me and they laid hands on me and they prayed, thank you. We don't live in the same household. Some of you might be offended by that. Be careful. Be guarded. Stay away from each other. Thank you. Thank you for praying. Not just with your words, but in love, but in love with corresponding action of a holy embrace. I thank you for that. That's full contact love. That's full contact ministry. That's what we should be pointing our faith to. I want you to be encouraged. There are people that you are living with in your own household 
that you've actually been a little reserved. Do I hug them? Do I kiss them? Because I went to the store and I don't know if I brought something back with me. Stop! You live with them. You touch the same doorknobs. You open up the same refrigerator door. Start embracing that love within your own house right now and point your faith to a time that will happen very soon to doing that to others. I want to share with you a little bit about this, this word greet that's used a lot in the New Testament. I think off the top of my head, it's some 60 some odd times and 49 verses about greeting. Because sometimes people will go, well, you can greet. You know, one of the definitions is from afar. I, I want to give you uh, the, the Noah Webster uh, dictionary, 1828 version. I, I've shared many times. The reason I love that is it's not watered down. There's actually scripture in the Noah Webster, 1828. A God-fearing man. And then I'm going to share also the Greek translation for the English word greet in many places in scripture. First, greet from the Greek. Aspazomai is the Greek word. It means to draw to oneself. Of those who greet one whom they meet in the way. What is the way? It's talking specifically about Christians that are believers in the way of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. To greet one whom they meet in the way, a salutation was made not merely by a slight gesture and a few words, but generally by embracing and kissing. This is why hundreds of people, when Judas said, the one that I kiss, that's the one. Because it was commonplace. Nobody would have been, been second guessing. That's a little out of ordinary. No, this is how people would greet each other. The Webster version says this definition. One of them is to pay compliments at a distance, to send kind wishes to. We read that in scripture a little earlier. Hey, we are writing from here to you over there. Greetings to you. That's one way. But again, it says to meet and address with kindness or to express kind wishes accompanied with an embrace. That's the second part of that definition. So that's the physical part. That's what I want to focus on. That's what God has put on my heart for us to point our faith at that. When I'm saying point our faith at that, what is faith? The Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Are you hoping to have full embraces with people? To touch them, to hug them, to love them. As a believer, scripturally, if you were not, you need to get in alignment with that. You need to be pointing your faith that there's going to be a day. Why? Because there's messages out there where people are saying, we don't know if we'll ever go back to the way it was. We don't know if we should shake hands or hug each other. I reflect back in the last couple of months, I had brothers in the Lord come up to me and, hey, let's do the elbow thing before things got serious. Hey, let's just do a little, you know, foot bump thing. Man, I'm not an elbow person or foot bump person. I am a full embracer. I love to give sugar. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to be doing it again. Why? Not because it's my agenda or my motive, but it's how we were created. It's what the scripture says that we should be doing. I'm a little fired up about this. <laughs> and I'm hoping from the flames of my fire that God has given me, that you are heated up by this message. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 28, it says, May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put together spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our Master, Jesus Christ. The God who can make us holy, which is actions of doing right, in regards to scripture and whole, whole spirit, soul, and body. There are some wonderful things that are happening because of some of this isolation. I know some people that are pressing in more and talking to the Lord. I'm seeing people walking together and doing things. All the stuff you've seen, there's a lot of good stuff that is happening. But that is not the complete picture 
To be completely whole means that we can also embrace our neighbors and not just wave from them across the street. Not have this, be so aware of, of, of spacing that we're, it becomes more fear than wisdom. That's what I'm talking about. Verse 24, 1 Thessalonians 5 goes on to say, The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. Friends, keep up your prayers for us. Greet all Christians there with a holy embrace. There it is. I love this translation of this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Greet all the Christians there with a holy embrace. Today we're not doing that. But we should be pointing our faith at it. I know you're saying, Pastor, you've said that multiple times. This is something that needs to be redundant. It's something that you need to fire up in your spirit. It's something that we need to come together in agreement that that voice that's inside of us, that greater is he voice that's inside of us is greater than that he thing that is in the world. And that thing in the world wants to keep us apart. But we need to fire up that thing that God put inside of us. That thing is fellowship. That thing is whole spirit, soul, and body. That we can love each other with our spirits. That we can love each other with our soul where the will, the mind, and the emotion reside. And we can love each other with our bodies. We were meant to be Contact people. Full contact people. Can you imagine football with no contact? Well, I guess you could take the foot out of it, right? It's just a ball game. Can you imagine any sport without contact? Can you imagine Jesus, what He did for us on the cross? It wouldn't mean as much if they didn't hit Him, spit on Him. Do all those things to him. We were like, well, I could have done that. But there was full contact for a full sacrifice that we could live free lives. Wow. I see the power in that. I hope that you see the power in that. I hope that this stirs you up. Why? Because there are some things out there that are, that are not right right now. Now, I'm not an extremist. I'm not the one to go against the grain. See, scripturally, we need to abide, as the word says, to governing authority. Some people don't like that. Oh, they're doing this and that, whatever. As believers, that's who I'm talking to. The scripture says that we need to abide by the things that are going on. So there is a balance to doing that. But we also need to Look at what the rest of the word says and know that we are not supposed to live without contact forever. And no devil in hell with any kind of disease. By the way, people are saying this is a new disease. You don't think God see this? He was in the beginning. He is in the present. He is in the future. He knows all things. All things were framed by him. He is not surprised. He didn't wake up today and go, whoa, okay, now I got to react to this thing. I got a new message. I got to." He knew it. He knew it. So I want to share with you some reasons that should fuel your fire to point your faith towards full contact with others. I have a new revelation of, about the compassion for some people that can't be with their loved ones. And I'll admit over these last couple months, things have, as I've been trusting God, have been really great in, in a lot of ways for, for me and my family. But just recently, this in these last few days, um, we were out one of our few trips, salted in every week or so to get groceries. When I came home, we pulled up, I... I went out to check the mailbox and I heard somebody calling my name. It wasn't a voice that I recognized and I looked up from, from where I was at to the direction the voice was coming and I seen a small group of people gathered uh, in a parking lot across, across the street from my house. There's a church there and they were calling my name with some intensity. 
the short version, my father-in-law who lives next door had went for a walk and he fell. Praise God he's okay, but he fractured his hip. And so as I began to run across the parking lot, he would, they had got him, some good neighbors, had got him picked up and set in a chair. I thank God that they didn't abide by some of the things that are going on. Complete and total strangers picked him up. Somebody that was bleeding in a couple of places and put him on a chair. Thank God for that. They had called the paramedics. I began to talk to my father-in-law and he was, he was coherent, but I could see that he was in pain. The reason I'm sharing this with you is that in that moment, I, was, I had my hand on his knee and I was just talking with him. And that's just normal. I wouldn't have done it from a distance. There's, just, there's no way. The first responders showed up and they began to kind of gather around. And as we did this, I noticed without words that the people that were standing around just started, started to to pull apart from each other. There were three girls that obviously had been spending time with each other in the church, these young women, God bless them. And they were shoulder to shoulder, and pretty soon they were kind of, there was a little bit of space between them. The neighbor across the way who had provided the chair, he, he, was, he started to get about eight, 10 feet away. And first I thought, well, you know, this is the right thing to do for first responders to come in, but there was something different going on. And I was still standing there. My wife was right behind me. And one of the gentlemen, the first responders, came up and started asking my father-in-law questions. And I just sort of backed off a foot or so just to, just to give him space. Cause... And then the first responder stopped and he said, he looked right at me and he said, Sir, can you tell me what relationship you are to this man? And I said, uh, I'm his son-in-law. He goes, could you just step back, step away? I did. It was really hard. I knew they needed to attend to him, but it was a different kind of step away. I've been in that situation before where there was first responders. I stood over a man that accidentally shot himself in the leg. I had my hand in his hand. This was a couple years ago. I was... He, he looked up at me and he thanked me for praying with him. And there was first responders that stood beside me and a couple of them had their heads bowed and one of them was attending to the guy and he didn't tell me to step away. So I've been in that situation before. I'm sharing this with you because there are people out there that have loved ones that have gone to the hospital for various reasons. I haven't seen my father-in-law. The last look I have imprinted in my mind was him looking up from a gurney in the back of an ambulance, looking right into my eyes, and I just smiled. And it was a smile by faith, but my heart was heavy. I haven't been able to go into the hospital. I've been greeting and praying for him from a distance. Thank God we're getting communication and he's doing okay. I'm sharing this with you because that's not the way that it's supposed to be. We need to be pointing our faith as the body of Christ, towards full contact ministry, to loving on each other. I hope this stirs you up. I believe you can tell that I'm stirred up. We should be. The scripture says that. Stir yourself up. Remember the gift. The gift that was imparted to you with the laying on of hands. What ministry would be complete without us being able to lay hands on each other and pray for each other, to embrace each other, to give each other a hug, to have a holy kiss? What ministry, what fun would that be? I think we're in agreement. I hope you are. It's no fun. But fun is something that we can have. Stir yourself up. Get in the Word. Spend time with the Lord. Wave at people from a distance right now. People that you live with, start nurturing that full contact love. 
I'm sharing that because I believe we've started to err on the side of fear. I know there are some of you that have gone to the store and came back in a little resistance to hug the people you're spending days with. I'm sure there's people out there, they're sanitizing, and they maybe hug somebody in their family, and when they're by themselves, maybe they sanitize their shirt. Again, there's being smart, but I believe we're at a point now where we need to really start being guarded and allow faith, which again is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. The substance is a full contact, love relationship with those people that are around us. The evidence is that there's rules and boundaries and things all over that are contrary to that. We have to make a decision in those places. And as believers, scripturally, <clears throat> the decision should be to embrace embracing. Well, that's about enough of that for now. I love you in the Lord. Now, I hope you were blessed by this. I was blessed to minister it. And again, this full contact message is not my message. This is something the Lord put in my spirit. I pray you receive it as such. I want to give you an opportunity right now. If there's some areas in your life that you've kind of gotten off the path a little bit relative to what we're supposed to be doing with all the rules and stuff, but you've gotten off the path a little bit too much. You've allowed yourself to get into the fear and you just want to get right with the Lord and get back. Just, I want to share with you all you have to do is bow your head and close your eyes if you'd like. The important part is just confessing. Like the prodigal son, he took what the father gave him and went out into the world and said that he began to have relations with the citizens of the world. In essence, became worldly. But that met its end. He came to his senses. He returned to the father. If you've gotten off track, that's all you have to do. Let's talk to the Lord. Lord, forgive me for moving in fear. Forgive me for allowing the cares of the world to choke out you, the good word, Lord Jesus. I repent of my ways and I come back to you. It's that simple. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and the Holy Spirit is reaching into your heart right now and speaking to you, His hope, His love, it can be yours. The Bible says that in Romans 10, all that is necessary is that for you to believe in your heart that God sent His Son for you. And that you confess with your mouth that Son, Jesus, is your Lord. Very simple. Just turn inward and pray. Pray to God. Just say, God in heaven... I know you're real. By faith, I know that you have a son and his name is Jesus. And that you sent him for me. Lord Jesus, I call you Lord because that is what I'm making you today. Come into my heart. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Have my life. I commit it to you. I receive you now. Lord, it's in your glorious name I receive you. The powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen means so be it.
And lastly, I want to share with you an opportunity for tithes and offerings. Oh, yeah, money. The world has been ministering an economic drought out there. And what it does is it makes people want to hold on to what's theirs. And in essence, the principle behind that is I need to provide for myself. I need to watch out for me. What does your love walk look like right now? We talked about the physical part of it. Are you loving on others or are you just more guarded about others putting something on you? Your love walk should look like something. Again, I'm speaking to the body of Christ, the believers, scripturally, about tithes and offerings, finances. There's people out there that are concerned about it. This isn't for me. Sure, the Bible says that let him who has taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. This isn't me lobbying for me, for this church. Because I have faith in God that he's providing for me, and he has gloriously. Gloriously. This is for you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 12, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. God wants you to have an abundance for everything that you do. The scripture goes on to say in 2 Corinthians verse 10, Now may he who supplies the seed finances to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. This scripture was written, it goes on to say in verse 12 that the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also, I like how the message translation says, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 12, it also produces abundant and bountiful thanksgivings to God when we sow. So, so, <laughs> as you're led by the Lord, pray over the seed that you're sowing that God has put onto your heart. The Holy Spirit will let you know. You'll have a peace about it. Trust that peace. I pray this full contact message blessed your heart, renews your soul, your will, your mind, and emotion, and strengthens you in your body to be prepared for a full contact, full embrace by this pastor when I see you. I love you in the Lord. May God richly bless you today.